Idaho Matters is one way to learn about the people, the places, and the things that make Idaho unique. From the geography, the flora and the fauna, to the culture and arts of this place that we call home. Subscribe and listen to Idaho Matters today at boisestatepublicradio.org slash podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. From Boise State Public Radio, this is The Connector, Idaho's Daily News. Good morning. I'm George Prentice. This morning, we've got details on a big change in the weather. We have an update on a suspicious fire at the Union Block Building in downtown Boise. And we will tell you what Idaho election officials will and will not do at the polls this year. It is Wednesday, the 30th of October, and here are today's stories. Cold and wet will be the weather words for the next several days. Stephen Parker at the Weather Service says it begins with some approaching clouds. Those clouds are the leading edge of a large upper-level system that's moving in off the Pacific, and that's going to bring us precipitation late Wednesday night through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even some showers into Sunday. Of course, it's not going to rain the entire time, but we're going to have periods of rain all the way through there. And can you give us a sense of what snow levels might be like? Of course. Snow levels are going to start out around 4,500 feet. Um, Might get as low here in the valley as 4,000 feet, but I don't think we're going to see flakes here in the valley until maybe small chance sometime next week. But definitely up on bogus and in mountain communities. Yes, yes. The higher elevations will see over a foot of snow. Um, if you count all the way going into Saturday, um, even McCall has a chance to see around six inches. Oh, my goodness. And again, how long might this system last? Um, this system is going to be with us right into uh, through the weekend. Right. It's going to come in in a couple of different phases, and it looks like it's going to be followed by another weaker system uh, next Monday night into Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So warm clothing for trick-or-treaters and maybe for the rest of us, some rain gear. That sounds like a great idea, George. Yes. He is Stephen Parker at the National Weather Service office in Boise. Here's an update on a fire which broke out in the historic Union Block Building in downtown Boise. You'll remember that on the 12th of this month, a fire broke out on the first floor of the building on Idaho Street, That building had been shuttered after city inspectors found the structure to be unsafe. At the time, investigators suspected arson, and indeed, late yesterday, Boise police said they had identified three juvenile suspects that investigators think are responsible for that fire. The case has been turned over to a prosecutor for review. Police say possible charges might include arson and or burglary. Meanwhile, firefighters remain on the lines of wildland fires this morning. This season has seen huge fires in our region. The Wapiti, the Lava Fire, the Middle Fork Complex, and of late, the 80,000-acre Red Rock Fire west of Salmon and northwest of Chalice. Dustin Miller is the director of the Idaho Department of Lands. This is a very active fire season, which is an understatement. This is Miller updating the legislature's Natural Resources Interim Committee this week. He was asked about possible prosecutions in this year's 200 human cost fires. Folks need to know that if they are careless uh, and they do start a fire and you know we respond or the other agencies respond, then we are going to go after that individual for cost recovery again because of the, the taxpayer dollars involved. Wildfires are often talked about in terms of acres burned or the number of structures destroyed. New research is bringing attention to their speed and evidence that they are accelerating. Murphy Woodhouse reports. Taking advantage of dramatic improvements in satellite imagery, researchers behind a new paper in the journal Science looked at more than 60,000 fires in the U.S. between 2001 and 2020. What they found is a relatively small number of fast-moving fires, those growing more than 4,000 acres in a day, were responsible for 89% of structures damaged or destroyed. Troublingly, in the West, they're also speeding up, 249% faster over the study period. The fire spread rate is more than tripling 
in only 20 years. Adam Mayhood, a researcher with the University of Colorado Boulder's Earth Lab, was one of the study's authors. He pointed to climate change and vegetation shifts to faster burning species like cheatgrass as likely factors. For the Mountain West News Bureau, I'm Murphy Woodhouse. Six days until Election Day and about a quarter of a million Idahoans have already cast a ballot. Early in-person voting will continue today from Bonner County to Twin Falls and many counties in between. Meanwhile, apparently some things can't be repeated often enough because Ada County Clerk Trent Triple told Ada County Commissioners yesterday that a number of myths are floating out there. For instance, the fact is you can no longer request an absentee ballot. And, for the record, yes, you can register to vote at the polls. Um, there's been some news coverage recently about the ability to still request an absentee ballot. That is not a, a true statement, and I want to clarify that. You can still, if you haven't registered to vote, you can register, but you have to register in person, either on early day. voting or on election day. Apparently there's some other things going around out there that says you don't need an Idaho driver's license to register to vote, and that's an incorrect statement. The law is very specific on a current Idaho, Idaho driver's license. You can use a U.S. passport, a federal ID, um, a tribal card, or a concealed weapon is the other ID that you can use to be able to go register to vote. Meanwhile, Idaho will not be enforcing a ban on political apparel at polling places unless it also includes active electioneering. That decision coming from an opinion published in 2020 by the previous Idaho Attorney General, Lawrence Wasden. Troy Oppie reports. Electioneering laws in Idaho ban signs or advocacy within 250 feet of a polling place. Lawmakers extended that bubble from 100 feet during the last legislative session. The law has also been widely interpreted as banning political apparel in polling places. But according to the Associated Press, the former attorney general wrote in an opinion four years ago banning political shirts or buttons without someone also actively electioneering with it was unconstitutional. We're not looking for conflict at any of the polls. We really are trying to help facilitate everyone having the opportunity to cast their ballot and have their voice heard. That's Idaho Secretary of State Phil McGrain speaking on Idaho Matters yesterday. He says while they hope people will be mindful of polling place neutrality and leave political apparel at home when they come to vote, but... If someone sees someone with a t-shirt, most likely they're just going to be asked to vote and get in and get out quickly um, so that they don't disrupt other voters. Interfering with other voters, making statements or other active politicking is still a violation of electioneering law. McGrain says there have been a few minor reports of electioneering violations, but so far this election cycle, everything has gone smoothly overall. Troy Oppie, Boise State Public Radio News. And that is today's episode of The Connector. I'm George Prentice. We'll see you back here on Thursday. If you enjoyed this podcast, we'd love it if you could rate or review it wherever you're listening right now. If you're feeling generous, spread the word in your circle or share The Connector with a friend you might think would like it. And thanks for listening. The candidates for November are set. I know Donald Trump's type. Between now and Election Day. We are not going back. A campaign season unfolding faster. Kamala Harris is not getting a promotion. Than any in recent history. Make America great again. Follow it all with new episodes every weekday on the NPR Politics Podcast.